So what are we going to do? We're going to obtain four ion samples. All right. We're going to label our test tubes, prepare the chromatography paper according to the instructions that are in the lab manual. We're going to spot the compounds onto the paper and develop them, measure their RF, and then we're also going to look at an unknown sample, which I'll have you to identify, and we're going to do the visualization. Um, and the beauty of it is that it's all virtual. So here are my solutions. I have a copper uh, two solution. So this solution is uh, filled with copper ions. I have a uh, nickel two solution. So it's filled with nickel ions. An iron three solution. Uh, so that's filled with iron iron ions. And then a cobalt two solution that's filled with cobalt ions. So I've prepared my chromatography paper. I have an X here in each panel, just like uh, the the uh, lab manual instructs us to do. And I have a, a line one centimeter from the bottom of each panel and of chromatography paper. So now here's my iron. I'm going to spot that onto the chromatography paper. I dip the capillary in, bring that over, and I spot it on the X. And now I have my iron spotted above the one centimeter line. Then I'll bring in nickel, and I'll go ahead and spot that on the capillary on the uh, chromatography paper. Then I'll bring in my copper ions and I'll go ahead and spot that. And it'll be spotted in the third panel. And then I'll bring in my cobalt ions and I'll go ahead and spot the cobalt onto the chromatography paper. All right. And now it's time to develop it. So I have a beaker and a watch glass. That's my developing chamber. I'm going to use my acetone HCl solvent mixture as the mobile phase which is going to be used to drag again the compounds up the paper through capillary uh, action or wicking action and now I just watch as the spots move up the plate notice the iron move really quickly uh, and then the cobalt move really quickly but the copper and the nickel did not let's look at those again so watch again the iron is flying up the chromatography paper so is the cobalt but you see the copper and nickel are moving a lot slower so we can let's talk more about that so now we're going to test to see which one of these were actually hydrates right we already talked about cellulose grabbing onto those hydrates let's go back again if we look at the spots again the ones that move really slowly that means that they're really sticking to this chromatography paper the ones that move quickly uh, that means that they're not sticking very well. So when we look at uh, the, the test for metal aqua complexes, what we're going to do is uh, expose the, that chromatography paper to ammonia and see if any of those spots actually change colors. So the cellulose, we already talked about how it grabs on to those hydrates, right? If it's a hydrate, it's going to move a lot slower. Um, and if and, and, and again, a hydrate is a metal with water bound to it as a ligand. All right, a ligand is, is just a, compl a complicated word for a water or any other molecule that's bound to a metal using a pair of electrons. All right? uh, if, and if we test this chromatography paper with ammonia, any hydrate is going to turn dark blue. And if, it, if, it's the, if it's not a hydrate, the other possibility for the, for the uh, case of this experiment is that it's a chloro complex, which means it moves up the plate rapidly. All right, so let's look here. Right, ammonia can uh, react with hydrates in a couple of ways. Before we actually show you the test, let's talk about this. So it can react through what's called proton transfer or deprotonation. That means you remove H plus from one water molecule of the hydrate, and I'm going to show you that. It can also um, react <clears throat> with um, the hydrate by doing what's called ligand replacement. Uh, again, a ligand is just a group like a, an atom or a molecule that's bound to the metal using a lone pair of electrons. So ligand replacement, uh, you, you, you end up replacing one of the water molecules with an ammonia molecule. So I'm going to show you both of these processes. So the way proton transfer works, here's my metal hydrate. Uh, it has six waters around it. Here's my ammonia. If you look at the other side of the equation, the O8, one of the H2O's has lost an H, right? That's because NH3 has pulled off an H. So you have an OH and then H2O and five of those now, no longer six, 
and then NH3 becomes NH4. Now let's look at that and see how that actually works. So this is what the metal hydrate looks like. It's actually an octahedral complex with six waters around it. Right? I'm going to bring in ammonia and ammonia is going to give that pair of electrons to hydrogen and then the OH bond is going to break and those electrons go back to oxygen. Right? Now let's look at what happens. So here is the the OH right this water lost the hydrogen so now it becomes OH and then the NH3 has actually gained the hydrogen by removing this hydrogen from here and so now it becomes NH4 plus right now let's talk about ligand replacement right look at the equation I have six waters I have three moles of ammonia to this one mole of uh, this metal hydrate complex I'm going to replace three of these waters with three ammonia. So that's what this, if you look on the other side of the equation, I have a metal hydrate, right? It's a trihydrate. It was a hexahydrate. Now it's a trihydrate with three NH3 groups attached to it. And then I lost three water molecules from here. So that's where I have now three moles of water. So let's look at how this works. Here's my hydrate. Here's one ammonia coming in, and that's going to attack the metal and kick off the water right and then that's going to happen again here's my second ammonia coming in it's attacking the metal and it's caught it's forcing water out and then my third ammonia comes in and that's also attacking the metal and forcing out water all right now let's look at what happens on the other side of the arrow you have a nice dark blue complex you can see that now you have three ammonias attached to that metal whereas you had six waters over here now there's only three waters and then there's three ammonias and then you lost three molecules of water from that hydrate and so that's what this 3H2O represents here alright so we've already developed our plate and now we've added ammonia to the developing chamber we have a new developing chamber we've added some ammonia to it and let's recall what our what our spots are obviously this is iron uh, this is nickel this is copper and then this is cobalt right now let's watch what happens as these ammonia vapors kind of uh, saturate this the, the uh, development chamber you can see that two of your spots actually turn dark blue right so what does that mean well ammonia turns hydrates blue right by ligand displacement so what happens is if it's a hydrate the ammonia comes in, it kicks off water and replaces it, and so those complexes show up as uh, navy or dark blue, right? So now let's talk about the calculation of the RF values, and this is something that you're going to have to do. Again, the RF or retardation factor, it's a unitless value as long as the two uh, numbers have the same units, right, centimeters or inches or however you want to measure it, uh, and it helps us to determine the polarity of compounds, uh, or the affinity of a compound for the stationary phase right? and it's calculated using uh, this little formula down here we've already talked about that so now let's go on to here we've talked about this already so now let's do let's look at our plate again here are our compounds again iron nickel copper and cobalt they're in that order and here's a table with the different um, ions and the distance that they travel and the distance that the solvent travels so you're gonna to have to go in and calculate these RF values on the, the, the quiz that you'll take after watching this video right here's an unknown question it says determine the following unknown uh, it was spotted on chromatography paper it had an RF value of around 0 0.35 and it turned dark blue upon exposure to ammonia uh, which of the four ions does the I does the unknown most closely match when you go take the quiz you'll answer this question All right? what do you need to do now you need to go into the paper chromatography folder under assignments uh, and then you need to click on the quiz that's there and you need to complete it but only do it after you finish this video and then that quiz is going to replace everything for this lab uh, but once you finish the video then the quiz will be available All right? if you have any questions you can email me uh, you can call me or you can even uh, tweet me on Twitter um, or you can come by the office and ask questions as well so if you have any questions let me know thanks